Hello everybody, I am Fedora Gamer, and it's time for the January 2015 Indie Box. The first Indie Box of the new year. I am quite excited for this, as I am every month. There's nothing more exciting than going out to my mailbox and getting my Indie Box. So let's jump right into it, shall we? Alright, cut. I haven't looked at this yet, but I already cut the, uh, the tape, but apparently that doesn't help. Jeez. Okay, let's just shred the box here. There we go. We just shred the box. All right. The game this month. What the heck is this? Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding? <laughs> it comes with an indie box SNES style controller. And on the back here, you can see the uh, Super Win the Game, which is the game of this month. They do announce the game ahead of time, but don't tell you much anything else about what's in there. Uh, Super Win the Game is by the Pitman Brothers. I forget what their company name is, but uh, they've made also quite a few awesome games. Uh, Eldritch was the uh, first game I played of theirs, and there's the original Win the Game, which is on Steam for free. And this is kind of a, I don't know if I'd call it a sequel or a reimagining of Win the Game, made into a much larger, more expansive game. I've heard of it and seen the trailer and whatnot, but I have not played it yet, and I do not own it. And it's always nice. This thing feels great. SNES is one of the, the best classic controllers. And with the uh, Indie Box sticker on there, a little. Sorry, freaking camera. Focus, thank you. The sticker is on there a little. a little crooked, but that's kind of awesome. It's things like this that make me love Indie Box. Now I'm going to avoid showing you my Steam key here, and I have to get my sharp object out to open the rest of this box. Now this is the first time, well no, it's not quite the first time, it's the second time they've had something outside of the box. And as you can see the box is styled, oh that glare, is styled after an SNES game here. Only for Indie Box. Super 3 exclusive, wait this game has 3D? Okay well I have a 3D display so I won't be trying that. Look at the back here and it, it looks very much like an SNES Game box. Minor Key Games, that's the name of their company. Alright, let's bust the box open here. Hopefully I don't have to destroy it as much as the previous one. Speaking of that, we don't need you anymore. Yeah, ooh, we have a cloth map in here of Super Win the Game. That's pretty awesome and very pixely, which is fantastic. That's cool. It's a nice smooth microfiber. You know, it feels like those glass cleaning, screen cleaning cloths. Maybe that's really what it is. Is a, It's a cloth map that's also a microfiber cleaning cloth. That's actually kind of awesome idea. I will probably take that to work and use it for cleaning. Now we have the, uh, the game cartridge, the USB game cartridge, which this one they've uh, made it look like an SNES cartridge. Very creative. I dig it, guys. Well done there. So I can get back into the little case. I love these cartridges to give out. They also have more than just the game. It does have the uh, the game, the DRM free version of the game to go along with the Steam key that comes on sticker on outside the box, which you didn't see because my Steam key, you know, I've probably used it before I put this video up anyway. The one thing I will say about them is the case in, in the yeah, thing inside the case always seems a little janked up when I get it. Not really a major concern, complaint. I'm just going to point that out. It never seems to fit quite right. As you can see, I'm having a heck of a time getting it back in here without things going shooting out the sides. Anyway, not, not really a thing to actually complain about. I'm just pointing it out, I guess, for no apparent reason. We have the, the Indie Box sticker. Now, normally you get one of these every month, and it has a color scheme slash kind of background or a character on it that is uh, themed after the game of the month. But this one is just straight up any box logo with their normal colors. Nothing bad, I don't have one of those yet, so I'm fine with that. What else do we have in here? We have the uh, the game, the easing that comes with it. Oh, official strategy guide, which is to have an instruction book for Super Win the Game. Official strategy guide, and this is the easing and everything here. Super Win the Game sticker. Which will go to my sticker collection, along with that indie box sticker. 3D glasses. 
So I guess you don't need a 3D monitor to do the 3D mode. That's kind of cool. Uh, unfortunately, due to... I have a lazy eye. My left eye is a lazy eye. Which has rendered most 3D stuff, even the newer ones, but especially these old school things like this, useless to me. I don't actually see it in 3D. It doesn't work for me because of my lazy eye. So there's a little bit of information about me none of you knew, I'm sure. Well, not many of you knew. Stone knew. So this aspect of it, which, it, I, you know, this, this kind of 3D was always just a gimmick, but it's charming that it's put in the game and they send you glasses for it, but that will be useless for me. And that, no, that's not it. There's something in here that is like the exact size of the box here. All right, right, Super Win the Game, the uh, soundtrack, which comes pretty much every month. This has 18 or 16 tracks on it, 18, 16 tracks on it. So, yep, there is the soundtrack. Again, I know I probably say this every month, but I would love if they would throw the soundtrack as well on the USB cartridge, because some of us have kind of have no need in the for the obsolete, you know, uh, optical drives, optical media is kind of a dead format as far as I'm concerned. Even so, if they ever watch this video, put the music on the USB key, the USB cartridge as well. So let's do a quick recap on this. The soundtrack, the really cool SNES box, the e-zine here, which talks about everything that comes with it. Now it seems like a lot of kind of light on stuff except for the controller, which is kind of the bulk of it, you know, when they put something like that in. Which, there's there's the Pittman brothers. Really cool guys. I've talked to them both before, back when uh, Eldritch came out. I've, they, I've talked to David more than I have Kyle, but they are a really cool brother indie game developer team that makes some cool stuff. You guys are awesome. You know, the, the normal easy and stuff, and then the strategy guide. Yeah, CRT simulation. Hmm. And then it talks about other games, you know. And these uh, cartridges, I need to remember to keep look at them. They uh, sometimes contain other digital bonuses like, say, uh, demos of games, other other such indie game-ish goodness there. But anyway, when we had the cartridge, we had the microfiber cloth map, which is super awesome feeling. The 3D glasses to go with the game. The set of two stickers to add to my sticker collection. And then this this is cool. I mean, I kind of thought about getting a USB uh, SNES controller in the past. So this this is kind of fantastic. I feels nice. It feels, from what I can remember, like the original. It has nice feedback. The D-pad feels pretty great. A little stiff, but it'll loosen up after time. Mm, that sounds terrible. Th things like this is why I really like going with IndieBox over Loot Crate. I love Loot Crate, but a lot of cool stuff came from it. Great figurines and shirts. You can always count on there's going to be a figurine and a shirt every two or three months and whatnot, but nothing in there seemed, would, seemed all that creative. Cool geek stuff, but nothing that seemed very creative. And since these are based around a single game, they come out with some creative ways of doing that. Every month, there's always something I pull out of the box, at least one thing, that just kind of astounds me at how cool that is or how clever it is. So that's why I love Indie Box. But enough of me jabbering on about the stuff that came with. Let's go ahead and uh, hop over and check out the game. And I'm definitely going to play it with the new controller. See you guys in a second. And welcome back. Though it's only been a few seconds for you guys, it's uh, actually the next day for me because I didn't get around to finishing this video all in one day. But nonetheless, this is Super Win the Game. Uh, something that's a big different from the difference from the original win the game is there's actually an overworld. The original win the game was purely side-scrolling platform, which is what this game mostly is, with an overworld connecting the areas, with lots and lots of secrets sprung, sp sprung, spread. That's the word, sprung. It's nowhere close. Spread around the world in <clears throat> both the platforming sections and in the overworld here. This game is kind of a mixture of a. Uh, a precision platformer slash some Zelda, old school Zelda vibe to it, some Metroidvania like item gating, though purely non combat. It's all about avoidance. So let's go ahead and uh, I haven't headed up here before. Head up here in this cave. I've played about an hour of this. These bells are your checkpoints. You do have infinite lives in this game, 
But it's not as simple as that seems. Hmm. Let's see what's down here. The bells sometimes use them is not a good thing. Sometimes... Oh. Sometimes having your checkpoint in a certain place can be a bad thing. Okay, let's try this again. It's all about timing. I said this is a precision platform, right? This is even hard areas. I've done much harder areas than this. This game does get pretty crazy hard sometimes, though. So. There we go. Uh, that's a lot of spikes. Uh, hmm, I want that gem. I am using the uh, SNES controller that came with the game. It works fairly, fairly well most of the time. It's sometimes the right button on it likes to uh, be a little sensitive and go to the left. I cannot get to that until I, until I get a double jump item, I believe. Well, I want to see what else is in here. This is when I would have preferred to actually uh, still be checkpointed to the bell over here. Well, that was bad timing. That was bad as well. Ooh, that was close. It's all about, it. it's really, really difficult, but it's about not punishing you it's most of the time. Most of the time you very quickly get back to where you were to try again. Kind of super Meat Boy-esque in that regard. See so what's over, yes, I want that gem. Now there are two resources to worry about. You have gems and keys, oh, and then the heart pieces, which are the point of the game is to collect, I believe, the six or the eight heart pieces of the king that's now the Hollow King. And uh, restore peace to the land, etc., etc. Uh, keys and gems. Now, how keys are done in this game is rather interesting. It's not uh, this key goes to this door. It is there's keys spread out through the world and locked doors spread out through the world. So it's a resource. You can buy keys with gems or go to a key loaner, but you'll occur a debt. I don't know exactly what that entails because I have not done it yet. But it's very possible to go to the bottom of dungeon and find a locked door with some goodies behind it that you don't have a key for. Looks like I'm going towards the ice area. Okay, yep, we have sliding physics here. Okay. Ooh, wow. This looks... Am I gonna, like, die of... from the snowstorm? One thing about this game is you don't know <coughs> where... You don't specifically know where all of the points are that will actually bring you into a, a uh, 2D area. There are some hidden. It's good to search any object that looks out of place and you might find a hidden little area that could contain a gem or a key. We can check this town out here. Four Corners Lodge. Uh, sliding ice. Oh, all the shops are shoved into one. Uh, that's a penguin. Here, penguin. That's a big ass penguin. Can I talk to you? Nope. This is all the shops one. We have the fortune teller. Okay. All our vendors are downstairs. Well, I got a free key just to use it, but... Yes, I saw that. Alright. Yeah, that, that's a freaking huge penguin lady. Alright, we have the gem, the jeweler here. I can buy a skeleton key, which I'm guessing gives you infinite keys. And it does take quite a bit of effort in finding the secrets to get to the 30 gems. Though something has hinted that gems have another use besides just buying keys, but I'm going to buy that. Okay. I don't know what exactly that does, but... Hmm. Maybe that's the thing that the gems are better, more than just the keys, is that opens a certain door. So, I don't know, probably good that I got it. And let's see what the fortune is. Okay, I've played for an hour and 22 minutes, excuse me. <clears throat> 77 times, just pretend you didn't see that. Collected about a, a fourth of the gems. I narrowed a debt. Head north to the snowy, I'm in the snowy lodge. What? And this is the uh, key lender here. But he can't lend me keys. I'm not sh sure why. I don't know who you are. Sure, we'll do you a favor. 
Arcadians are some kind of <clears throat> ancient race from another world that are wise and give you hints and items along your way here. Okay, well, I figured I'd be going to an ice dungeon, so. All right. Well, apparently, I need to search for the guy in the snowstorm. I bought this super special key. No clue what that does. All right, yeah, back to sliding. Sliding physics in platformers always mess with me very, very badly. I see bits of land out there. Well, ice. I do have a magic snorkel that lets me go underwater, which there is some hidden points. I'm stuck. Uh, I have to find the path through, apparently. There we go. There's something here. There we go. I found something. Stay warm. Yeah. Yay, spots of not ice. Oh, it's one of the hearts. First one of the uh, hearts I found, actually. And that's about all there is. I do wonder if I can possibly get an item that melts ice. It's a lot of item gaining in this game, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but there's definitely backtracking. You'll find dungeons where you won't have, or areas where you won't have what it takes to get to a certain item. And you can come back and get it later after you found that certain item. As you saw with the uh, gem that was going to take double jump. Can I swim? I, I, I assume that swimming in this icy water would be a very bad idea, but that must be the ice palace. Let's see what's in this cave here. Oh, I've actually been here from the other side. There's multiple ways to get to a lot of areas. Oh, God. Uh, eh. Well, oh. I said, well, I can survive underwater now that this, never mind. There's, uh, there's spikes. And that's bad. It looks like there's probably an area under there that there is no spikes. So let's see, let's see if we can find something hidden down here. Nope, that's not a safe spot. Oh, okay. I did hit the bell though. So now I have a new checkpoint. So I might as well explore a little bit down here. There is definitely a gem down there. How the heck am I supposed to get to that? Perhaps in the future I will get something that makes me immune to spikes. Anything else of interest around here? Let's head into the glacier dungeon here. Palace, whatever. <laughs> Slippery one always. Yep. Oh, that's... This is going to be painful. This one, you gotta pretty much just keep going and time your jumps right. Damn it! Oh, are you kidding me? Mmm... I did tell you this game does get real difficult, didn't I? Oh, come on. I'm going to... Meh. Maybe I don't have to just keep going. It's got to be very... Careful. Okay. That forward momentum, there's no stopping it once you start jumping. It is, uh... Your jumps aren't just one... One height. The longer you press the button, the, the higher you jump. So it's a lot about timing that correctly. There. Aha. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. Sliding. Quit sliding. Uh, those blocks will come back here a second momentarily. I want to see what's in that door, but. Oh, you. Mm, you gotta be kidding me. I do realize it's probably very painful to watch, but that's what this game is. Very challenging, yet not punishing. No, oh, no, no, I should have jumped. I was going I was just trying to stop instead. A 
Okay, Pippin brothers, I used to think you guys were cool until you made the Ice Palace. Now, you're assholes. So, uh, that's the, the thing I hate most about any platformer is ice levels. Okay, let's, let's, yes, let's hit a bell at least. So I have to go through that again. Well, I survived. Oh, there's the, uh, the alien guy I was looking for. I, I want this gem, though. No worries. Let's do that right. There we go. Oh. He's frozen. Okay. Okay, well. We have a spaceman popsicle. Not very useful. But every one of these dungeons is basically to find an item that allows you to get to uh get through other item gating. As far as I know from the original win the game, and uh, from what I've seen of this game so far, it's oh god. It's purely non combative. I don't know if that changes later in the game for this one, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Go, 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 go! Thank you. Let's uh, time that better. Let's. Mmm. Cut. Mmm. Damn spikes! There. Uh. Slidey ice. Now these are, uh. These blue blocks here are because of an item I have that they show up, otherwise they wouldn't show up. Same with these red blocks. These gray ones, you know, they're normal. You could get through this without this, without these uh, items. Oops. But, uh, it's definitely made a lot easier by having these items. So this isn't completely item gated, but. No. Uh, no. All that for a key. Well, keys are fairly important, so I'm, that's not really a bad thing. I don't know. That's the shortcut back. I'm going to hit this before I do anything else. Uh oh, well. Whenever you get what you need, depth doesn't really matter at that point. Because it's a uh, infant lives. Though there are... There are different game modes that you can turn on where you have a limited number of life and there's a game mode where you have one life. That is ridiculous. You'd have to be a god amongst men to be able to get through this in one life. Why'd I do that? Okay. I have... <clears throat> Tesla's badge, which is an item that lets me walk through the uh, electrical things like that. Okay, th don't jump as high. Oh, uh, let the blocks respawn too. Uh, I will get this. Right, let blocks respawn. Mmm. Fuck you, game. Fuck you. There we go. Well, that's interesting. Um, okay. I have to let release that to use it as a shield. Except for I got ahead of the shield. And the shield got ahead of me. Well, a lot about a lot of this game is all about timing. There we go. I don't I don't know how to get that gem, and I don't know if I want to try right now. I just kinda wanna find the item of this dungeon. There's usually a lot more to the dungeon than just the item though. If you keep exploring around, you'll find, you know. Aha. Uh -huh. That was easy. 
You'll find bonus gems, bonus keys. Oh, oh, this is, looks like the item room. Eh, let me read it. Aha, double jump. I'm looking for this one because I've seen quite a few things I need it for. And this is interesting. At the end of each one of these dungeons, you get to be able to read this book, which puts you in some kind of dream state level. Well, I think that's a good place to end this. This is Super Win the Game. It is available on Steam since you, if you don't have a subscription to IndieBox. Um, not sure on the price. I didn't look it up before recording this, which I should have. But this has been this month's IndieBox. If you are interested in IndieBox of your own, there will be a link in the description. Full disclosure, this link is a an affiliate link. I will gain a little bit towards my account, my, uh, my next IndieBox, if you subscribe through my affiliate link. And if you do, I greatly appreciate it. If not, oh well, you should still grab any box to help support indie developers and get cool games and swag. I'm a Fedora Gamer. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Now go get your indie on.